the hound of baskervilles this story takes place both in london and the moors of devon dr mortimer requests sherlock holmes to investigate the mysterious death of his friend sir charles baskerville the local people think that his death is connected with the 200 year old family curse a monstrous demon dog roaming the moors and seeking revenge against the baskervilles dr mortimer is afraid that sir henry the nearest relative of sir charles who is returning home now might be in danger holmes sends watson to baskerville hall where he meets people who could be possible suspects there is barrymore and his wife and the archaeologist stapleton and his sister beryl stapleton holmes meanwhile has secretly arrived at devonshire and is investigating the case he finds an important missing link in a photograph that shows a striking resemblance between sir hugo baskerville and stapleton which means that he is actually a baskerville and with sir henry dead he will be the sole inheritor of the baskerville fortune he has a motive for murder but they will have to catch stapleton red-handed to prove his crime and more importantly save sir henry before it is too late how will they do it we picked up lestrade at the railway station and arrived at baskerville hall paying off the carriage we walked across the moor and reached the path leading to merry pit house a cold wind blew across the dark empty spaces on either side my god it doesn't seem a very cheerful place said lestrade we moved silently and carefully until holmes stopped us about 200 yards from the house this will do he said we can hide behind these rocks on the right watson you know the place creep forward quietly and see what they are doing i tiptoed down the path till i could look through the window sir henry and stapleton were sitting at the round table with coffee and wine in front of them stapleton was talking in a lively manner but sir henry looked pale you say the lady is not there holmes asked when i had told them what i had seen yes and there is no light in any other room either a dense white fog hung over the great grimpen mire and was slowly moving in our direction holmes turned his face towards it that fog is the one thing upon earth that could have upset my plans but it's already 10 o'clock our success and sir henry's life depends on his coming out before the fog is over the path as the fog came curling around the house holmes dropped on his knees and put his ear to the ground he is coming he said steps sounded soon we saw dr henry hurrying through the fog he passed our hiding place and walked on looking uneasily over his shoulders sometimes holmes hissed suddenly it's coming i heard the click of a revolver and then we saw it a dreadful shape leaping towards us lestrade yelped holmes stared and i froze a hound enormous and coal black fire bursting from its mouth eyes glowing jaws outlined in flickering flame a hound from hell it tore down the path towards sir henry stunned we let it pass then holmes and i both fired together the creature howled at the hit but did not pause sir henry stopped and looked back his face white hands raised in horror holmes raced ahead sir henry screamed as the hound roared we saw it spring on its victim hurtling him to the ground reaching for his throat but the next instant holmes had emptied his revolver into the creature roaring in agony it rolled upon its back and fell limp on its side sir henry lay in a faint we loosened his collar and his eyes fluttered open my god he whispered what was it it's dead said holmes we have laid the family ghost to rest forever the terrible creature's jaws dripped with a bluish flame and the small deep-set 
cruel eyes were ringed with fire. I touched its jaws, and as I held up my own fingers, they gleamed in the darkness. Phosphorus, I said, cleverly prepared to have no smell, as it would have interfered with the dog's sense of smell. We owe you a deep apology, Sir Henry, for letting you face this fright. I was prepared for a hound, but not for such a creature as this, and the fork gave us little time to receive him. You saved my life, a pale Sir Henry staggered to his feet. Holmes said he would wait while one of us went to the hall. He seated a shivering Sir Henry in the shelter of a rock while we walked towards Merripit House. We found Beryl, who was actually Mrs. Stapleton, bound and gagged in an upstairs room. She led us to Stapleton's secret hideout. When we reached there, we saw Stapleton dead, having slipped and fallen into the mire. 